What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. These are my DraftKings MMA picks for UFC Vegas 68. We have Sergey Spivak going against Derek Lewis. And we are back after a week off, and we are getting a, a treat here, a 12-fight card with a, a bunch of people making their debut. Of course, we have the Road to UFC tournaments on this card, four fights uh, from the Road to UFC, which... You know, no name value, but I think these four fights are going to play out fun. And I actually really like this card from a DraftKings perspective. I think it's going to be a very violent card. I think there's a lot of great plays sticking out. So, yeah, from a DraftKings perspective, I'm really looking forward to it. So, uh, before we get into it, though, if you guys can please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, trying to reach 20K subs in the hopefully the very near future. Also, now's a great time to sign up for DFS by the numbers.com. It's the first of the month. Um, I'm pretty early ahead right now. I have the DFS article already out, have uh, projections, rankings, all that stuff is is already out so i'm um, really looking forward to this card got a got a head start and then going to start getting a head start into ufc 284 next week so make sure you search, make sure you sign up on dfs by the numbers.com also have the patreon everything the same on there if you do prefer the patreon platform i know a lot of you guys do as well so be sure to check both those out down in the description all right uh, i say we get into it and break down this fight card from a dfs perspective and let us start with the fight doesn't go to decision lines we have a bunch of chalky ones here and rightfully so. I think a lot of these fights do finish. So we'll start with the first one. We have Derek Lewis going against Sergey Spivak, minus 800. Fight doesn't go to decision, sitting there on, on Bet Online Sportsbook. And yeah, I mean, I think this fight does finish one way or another. We have basically a striker versus grappler matchup. The striker and Derek Lewis, who could put out anybody's lights um, in the heavyweight division. You know, he's, he's knocked out Curtis Blades before. Um, he's knocked out multiple guys before in fights that he probably shouldn't be winning. And, you know, it, it seems like Derek Lewis, when he wins fights, it, it's when nobody's expecting it as of late. Like the, the Chris Dawkins fight, everybody was expecting Dawkins to win, including me. He was a pretty big dog in that matchup. Went out there and just starched Dawkins in the, in the first round. And, you know, Sergey Spivak has been knocked out twice, and it has been in the first round both times. Walt Harris and then also got knocked out by Tom Aspinall. So, you can't count out Derek Lewis ever, uh, especially on DraftKings. So 7,400, I'm going to be taking a hard look at Derek Lewis as an underdog. I'm going to have a ton of this main event, um, and I'm probably going to be pretty much probably close to 100% owned just because if Derek Lewis does win, it's going to be a knockout probably within the first two rounds. And if Sergey Spivak wins, I think he has one of the highest upsides on the slate with the takedown upside, the ground and pound, submission upside, TKO upside. So yeah, a fight that I do want to play both sides. I do lean Spivak to win the fight. I think he should be favored for a reason, but counting out Derek Lewis and fading this guy is just never a good idea. So absolutely going to be on the main event in this fight card. Next, we have a Duho Choi going against Kyle Nelson. Yeah, I like this fight a lot. This is minus, what is it, minus 325 fight doesn't go to decision. We have Duho Choi, a guy that's never in a boring fight, and I don't think this fight's going to be any different. I think these guys are going to stand and bang up to one man falls. Both guys have a ton of power. Both guys can be finished. I think this fight does finish, and it finishes pretty early. And at these price tags, I'm going to have a lot of it. Duho Choi, only 8,600. If he wins, I expect a knockout within the first round and a half. Kyle Nelson, if he wins, I expect a knockout within the first round and a half. Kyle Nelson, he's very dangerous, has a lot of power, and he very well could knock out Duho Choi, who's defensively irresponsible and has been knocked out before. Duho Choi takes taking a, a massive layoff here as well. But if this fight does get extended in any type of way, I do got a favorite Duho Choi who's going to have the better cardio. So I think Kyle Nelson, his path to victory is going to be an early knockout. And at 7,600, I'll be taking some shots at that. But, you know, same thing, Duho Choi, if he wins, I think it's going to probably be an early knockout as well. So another fight I do like both sides of. Um, my lean is, is Nelson just for the savings, but... I think Choi's a phenomenal play this week just because if he does win, I think it is going to be a knockout. I think he has a ton of power in Nelson. His cardio is not good. His striking defense is not good. And he's been finished a ton. So, again, another fight I really like this week. This next fight is a fight where I'm going to pretty much just be on one side. Uh, we have Rinya Nakamura going against Toshiyami Kazama, and I'm very high on Nakamura this week. Um, he's sitting at 9,300, probably one of my favorite plays on the slate. And this guy's a world champion wrestler, has a, a great wrestling background, and his wrestling really impressed me overall. But but not only that, on the feet, he has a ton of power. This guy, he puts people's lights out. He's 6-0, and five of those fights coming by finish. And I just think Kazama is going to be at a huge... Uh, disadvantage on the feet like if Kazama's not able to get this fight down to the mat he's going to be in big trouble and taking down a world champion wrestler 
and Rin Nakamura is going to be pretty dang hard to do. But yeah, if Kazama does get the fight down to the mat, he is a really good grappler. It's just hard to see him doing that. I'm going to be heavily invested in Nakamura this, this card. 9,300 as far as Kazama. Maybe a sprinkle here or there, but not too much, if any at all, to be honest. And then... We have the next fight. We have Jung Young Lee going against Yi Za. We have Jung Young Lee 8900 and then Yi Za 7300. And it's kind of like that, that last matchup we just talked about, the, the Nakamura matchup, where Yi Za is going to need to get this fight down to the mat. And I think Yi Za is going to have a better opportunity to get the fight down to the mat than, say, Toshiyama Kazama against uh, Nakamura, right? Um, you know, Yi Za, very good grappler. When he does get on top, you know, his opponents typically aren't getting up. Very dangerous as well. Both these guys are, are super dangerous. Uh, Jung Young Lee has a like a 78% finish rate and then Yiza has a 76% finish rate striker versus grappler matchup with that said Lee does have some grappling in his own right as well but I think Lee's going to want to keep this on the feet where he does have that big advantage I personally think Lee knocks out Yiza but Yiza at 7300 is somebody I'm going to be keeping my eye out on at that price tag just because he has the wrestling upside the grappling upside the submission upside but overall this is a fight I'm going to heavily target both sides as well especially at that price tag for Yiza at 7300 because there's not a ton of dogs I like on this card, but he's one that I think has some pretty good upside, and I don't think a ton of people are going to have him. Getting into our core place here, we talked about him a little bit. Rinya Nakamura, 9,300. Phenomenal wrestling, phenomenal striking, a ton of power. I think he gets a first-round knockout here. I think it's a really, really bad matchup for Kazama, and if all goes to plan, he should be able to stuff the takedowns of Kazama super easy and then just knock this guy out. So love me because I'm Nakamura. You're getting a little bit of savings off of the going to be very chalky 9,600 Tyar, who we'll talk about. So give me some Nakamura there at 9,300. Uh, Jung Young Park, 8,500. I really like Park in this matchup. He's going against Dennis to Aluin. Um, you know, Park is going to be the more well-rounded fighter here. Tons of volume from Park, landing almost five significant strikes per minute. On top of that, he just has a clear path to victory in this matchup. You know, Dennis to Aluin, what does he struggle with? He struggles with the takedown defense. He struggles with the grappling, the get-up game. When he does get taken down, he could be stuck on his back. He can be submitted. He's been finished a lot as well. And I think Jung Young Park, if he does take the path to least resistance with the grappling, he can rack up a solid score here. You know, he has good takedowns, very underrated grappler in Jung Young Park. He's kind of known for going out there and standing and banging, but there's a lot of fights where he goes out there and he takes down his opponent. And when he saw in his last fight against Joseph Holmes, who's a BJJ Brown belt, he was able to take him down, wear on him, and eventually finish him. And I can see a scenario where that happens here. So I do like Park, and he's only 8,500. Um, I like his toughness, his durability, his cardio, and the advantages he's going to have in this fight. I think for Dennis Tuolumin to win, it's probably going to be a first-round knockout. So I like Jung Young Park here to win. And at 8,500, I do like him quite a bit at that price tag. Uh, Sergey Spivak, 8,800. It, it's terrifying going against Derek Lewis, and I will have my fair share of Derek Lewis just because you have to. But if Spivak wins this fight, expect a ton of takedowns, um, a ton of control, a ton of grounded pound. Like what I like about Sergey Spivak is the fact that when he does take guys down, he's not just laying on them and, and controlling them and, and winning minutes. He's going out there, he's taking these guys down, and he's active with the grounded pound. He's nonstop. He's gonna make you work. And I could see him breaking Derek Lewis and. On, on his way to scoring like a, a massive score here and a win of course you got to worry about the power of Lewis of course there's a there's an opportunity for him to be knocked out here but I think if Spivak does win this fight he has one of the highest ceilings on the slate at 8,800 and then Da Eun Jung 8,700 I think he's super safe here um especially at this price tag of 8,700 he seems like cheap uh for you know his odd I mean he's, he's approaching like a minus 300 favorite on some books he's going against Devin Clark who you know, Devin Clark has been finished a lot. He's been finished in six of seven losses. If Devin Clark does not get this fight down to the mat, I kind of think he's screwed here. I, I like Donald Jung to get a knockout here and probably early on. Um, I just don't think Devin Clark's going to give him much problems here. Uh, Donald Jung going to be the much bigger fighter, the much physically stronger fighter. And if, if he can stuff the takedowns of Devin Clark, I think he makes this look pretty easy. So love me some Donald Jung at only 8,700. I feel like it should be much more expensive than that. Uh, GPP plays here are tournament plays. Tatsuro Tayara, who's probably going to be one of the highest owned on the slate here at 9,600. Yeah, I mean, he's in a smash spot here. He's minus 1,000 favorites. Some books have him like minus 1,500. He should go out there and eventually get the sub. Uh, very, very, very high price tag here, though, which, which kind of scares me on this slate where there's not a lot of dogs that stick out. There's a lot of big favorites. So I'm going to have a, a lot of Tayara, but... Um, I wouldn't mind getting away from him in, in some lineups as well, but I mean, he's going to go out here and, and win the fight. You know, does he win by, you know, finish? I think so. Potentially Aguilar has been finished in his only loss and that did come by submission. But if it does get out of the first round, you know, will he pay off the 9,600? We'll have to see. 
But, um, yeah, I think Tyre is definitely in play. I'm not going to completely avoid him, but I do think there's some other plays down low that are cheaper that could potentially outscore him. Um, so I'm just going to see how the builds go. I have not built any lineups yet. I'm going to do so after this video. But T Tyre is a great play. He's safe. If you want to play him in cash, that's fine. He's, he's going to win this fight. He's minus 1,000 for a reason. Uh, Jung Young Lee, 8,900. We talked about this guy a little bit. Just a lot of power. I mean, this guy's a freaking madman. He's going to go out there and try to get the finish, and he's going to try to get it very early. I mean, he's somebody that has a 60-second bonus upside. He has first-round upside. If he wins this fight, probably a first-round knockout. And I don't think many people are going to you know, be on this guy, you know? Uh, because around him, you have Sergey Spivak, who's going to be very chalky. You have, um, uh, of course, Tyara up there. You have Nakamura up there. You have, uh, what's his face? Um, did I say Tyara already? Who is the... Who else is up there? Somebody in 9,000. Uh, who is it? Um, I don't know. Who is the 9,100? Oh, Kinoshita. Yeah, Kinoshita, who we'll, we'll talk about, is up there as well. So I think a lot more people are going to be on the Kinoshita side, who was on the Contender Series. And I think Jung Young Lee is going to go a little bit under-owned. And I think he has first-round knockout upside. So I'm going to take some Jung Young Lee, 8,900. Uh, not the safest play in the world by any means, but I think he's a ton of upside here. Uh, Duho Choi, 8,600. We talked about it a little bit. Three-year layoff is not one in six and a half years, but he has a ton of power. And if he comes back looking anything like he did, you know, three, four, five years ago, he probably should go out there and, and finish Kyle Nelson. Uh, I do have my concerns personally about the layoff, but these guys are going to stand and bang it to one man falls. Kyle Nelson's been finished a ton. I think Duho Choi is definitely in play here at 8,600. And then uh, Yasaku Kinoshita, who just mentioned uh, 9,100, I think he's definitely in play as well. He's a finisher. He hits very hard going against Adam Fugit, who Fugit's very hittable. Um, Fugit showed like a 42% striking defense in his UFC debut, um, ate like seven punches per minute as well. Just a very hittable fighter and a guy that can be knocked out. And Kinoshita is somebody you don't really want to be hittable against. So I think Kinoshita probably does finish Adam, F or Adam Fugit and probably early on as well. Um, we'll talk about Adam Fugit in a little bit. I think Fugit's a sneaky pump play, but I think Kinoshita more often than not does go out there and knock him out. Uh, live dogs, not a ton sticking out here, but these are the kind of four that stick out the most. Uh, Jekka Saragi, 8,000. This guy's a, a freaking finisher. This guy hits like an absolute truck. Um, you're seeing it 8,000 right now. He has a 92% finish rate in 15 fight sample, finishing all but one of his wins. The guy's only been to decision once. He's so dangerous compared to his opponent, Jubilee, who Jubilee's only has a like a 34% finish rate. So if this fight does finish, uh, I think it's Saragi, and he's he's $200 cheaper than Jubilee, and I think he has all the finishing upside. I think he, if he gets stuff takedowns here, he's going to give Jubilee a lot of problems on the feet. Jubilee's, you know, you know, content to go out there and get into wars, and, you know, Saragi's not really a guy you want to get into a war with. So I like the finish upside from Saragi here. Um, it's the closest line matchup on the entire card. But I will be taking some sh shots on the guy just because I think he has a lot of upside and, and a win. Kyle Nelson, 7,600, another guy that I think has a lot of upside and a win. I think if he wins, it's it's probably in the first round. Duho Choi, three-year layoff. Duho Choi is not one in six and a half years. Duho Choi is getting into brawls, these wars, every single fight. He's going to give Kyle Nelson opportunities. And one thing Kyle Nelson does do well is he hits hard. Um, his wrestling's not good. He does have a BJJ brown belt, but I don't think he's going to be able to implement that game plan here against Choi. But Kyle Nelson does hit very, very hard, and he could potentially knock out Duho Choi, who's been on a very long layoff and has not won in a long, long time. And then Derek Lewis, 7,400. You got to play Derek Lewis every time he's on a card, um, no matter what. Uh, he has so much power. He can knock out anybody, especially Spivak, right? Like Spivak is a guy that's been knocked out before multiple times in the first round. So... Is it a favorable matchup for Derek Lewis on paper? No, not really, and that's why he's the dog, but you can never count this guy out. I mean, it just takes one shot, and this guy is one of the hardest hitters in the division, so you got to have Derek Lewis at 7,400. And then Yiza, 7,300. We talked about this guy a little bit. Uh, striker versus grappler matchup against Jung Young Lee. If he's able to take Jung Young Lee down, he could have success. He's a very good grappler. He's a finisher, finishing about half his wins by submission. Um, he's got to watch out for the power. He's got to get this fight down to the mat. And if he does get it down to the mat, he can have success. So I don't mind some Yuzah 7,300. Pump plays, only one here for me. It's Adam Fugit, uh, 7,100. I think he's going to have all the grappling upside in this matchup. If he does get it down to the mat, he could potentially have success. Um, you know, Kinoshita's take on defense does not look great. His get-up game does, though. Fugit's fought the better competition as well. And Fugit also has a ton of power on the feet. So um, I think Fugit actually is more live than these lines and these salaries do indicate. 
I personally think he probably does get knocked out, but at 7,100, I think he does have some upside here as far as a pump plate goes with some serious upside, and I don't think a ton of people are going to be on him. And then fades, Jiang Kim. What's weird about this is I actually don't think she's the worst play in the world. Like, I think she can go out there and realistically get maybe 90, 90 DraftKings points. The problem is you got Sergey Spivak, $200 cheaper. You got Dan Eun Jung, $300 cheaper. You have Duho Choi, $400 cheaper. You have Kino Shita, $100 more. You have Jung Young Lee, $100 less. You have Nakamura, $300 more. You have um, uh, Tayara, you know, $600 more. So, I mean, just every play around her has so much more upside, so much more finishing upside. This fight is like, like plus 250 or something crazy like that to go the distance. So or uh, to not go the distance. So yeah, I, I think it's a, a fade here. And I don't think, like I said, I don't think she's the worst player in the world. I think she wins. I think she puts a respectable score, but I just don't see her outscoring like a Tayara or a or a, a Kino Shita in a win or like a Jung Young Lee. I think all those guys have more upside than her. Um, But yeah, that's about it. A lot of a lot of uh, new fighters here. It should be a fun slate. Should be a, a, a really fun slate from a drafting perspective. I'm actually, I'm actually really looking forward to it. Lots of finishes, lots of plays sticking out. Cannot wait to build lineups. I'm a little bit ahead this week, so going to get on that. I'm hoping all 12 of these fights stay on because this is a pretty banger card. I, I think from a name value perspective, this card sucks. But as far as like the matchups, I think they're going to be fun. So, yeah, guys, that is about it. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Check out DFSbythenumbers.com. Um, pretty much all content is already posted for the week. Got really ahead this week. Um, check out the optimizer on there as well. That is included with the $10 a month. Um, but yeah, other than that, follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers, Instagram, DFS by the numbers, and check out the live stream Friday. And then we got a live stream Saturday before the prelims. And, and by the way, the prelims start at 10 o'clock Eastern at night. So late night card should be fun. Talk to you guys later and best of luck for UFC Vegas 68. See you.